One of my favorite things about doing this particular video series is it allows me to record my thoughts on lore, and so they're always there for me to go back and listen to. And it occurred to me we started off last episode talking about tree people. And as I do this invasion right here at the Curse Rotted Greatwood, I was like, holy shit, that ties into the tree people, it ties into the Birchwood women, uh, except instead of, you know, the rot, we call them Curse Rotted. Uh, it's like the curse is the rot of our world. And that got me thinking, man, in this invasion, I'm going to talk about everything there is to know about tree people, birchwood people, curse-rotted greatwood, and that'll do it for everything we know about tree people, curse-rotted greatwood, and birchwood women. Hey everybody, welcome back to Stream of Consciousness Invasions, Lore Edition. We are here, hammer dancing at the Undead Settlement. Uh, we are still playing a Sunbro, because this is where you actually find the Sunbro Covenant at. So, praise it. Look at this beautiful sunny area. We're using the Great Hammer and the Great Machete as a worker with the worker garb. Uh, we're now allowed to use human pine resin. We've got it on the belt. We're also now allowed to use kukris as well as throwing knives, and we can still use fire bombs. So, let's get started, right? And go. So here we are, Undead Settlement, fighting on the bridge um, where the high wall appeared. We've got... Um, all the typical stuff that we can use from this level. Uh, throwing knives, we're using the great machete, we're wearing the worker garb. I'm terrible with this weapon, and this fight drags on for a while because this is basically me learning how to use the weapon. Um, but I included it because I thought maybe uh, it might be fun to watch for people who like this weapon and use it. It might be fun for them to see how someone else who's unfamiliar with it uses it. Now, I've seen the moveset, you know, but I've never actually used it. Uh, one of the first things that I noted was how incredibly fucking hard it is to hit somebody with this thing. Um, the one-handed moveset, the R1-R1, is a true combo, as opposed to the two-handed moveset, it is not. The stun lock ends before you can get the second R1. So what I started doing was incorporating, um, there's another learning school. Uh, remember, I'm role-playing a fucking worker here, so, uh, and that means no cestus, you cosplay nerds. Ornstein did not have the Cestus. Artorius did not have a Cestus. None of those people had a Cestus. If you're going to cosplay, just give up parries for the sake of of realism. For the sake of video game realism, fictitious characters. Anyway, the one-handed moveset allowed me to throw in some punches, which don't do a lot of damage, but it's basically hardwired into people's fucking brains in Dark Souls. If you see an attack, you roll through it or you block, right? So if they roll from the punch, uh, that means that I can hit you with the machete on the when you when you roll out. Um, I have a good chance of catching you with a roll catch, which you'll see me do that several times in this fight. It's basically how I learned to to use this machete, um, along with some other things. But like I said, if you if you like this weapon or you know you were curious about it, um, maybe this could give you some insight into how someone else uses it. But onward, upward. Let's talk about some lore. We're fighting here on this wall, and we are surrounded by hollows and crates, carts, I'm sorry, that I'm assuming carried hollows. Uh, this is the beginning of um, the Path of Sacrifice. Uh, this is where they were taking hollows from, basically to feed Aldrich. We'll get into all that later. Um, but the high wall is the important thing here. It's basically just appeared right in the middle of this fucking undead settlement. And the reason I think it's appeared is because Lothric has refused to link the fire. Now, if you read the small Lothric banner, um, it talks about how the high wall just appeared one day. Um, and I think it appeared because the world was basically screaming, link the goddamn fire. And we, if we look at the, the actual banner, you'll see it's a circle made up of a series of links. Links as in link this fucking fire and the circle could represent the dark sign maybe. But what's interesting is the flag talks about messengers and the only other time that messengers are mentioned that I can recall is the holy messengers of Lothric. So if those demons who in Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 3 carry us, uh, if those are the messengers, quote unquote, if those are the angels, uh, the reason the religion has been banned is because those demons want us to link the fire. They did in Dark Souls 1 and they did in Dark Souls 3. They basically, you know, since Fortress was the test you had to pass. And then the demons would carry you to Anna Rolando, right? So I think the same thing's going on in Dark Souls 3. You beat Vort and they're like, hey, you're our dude now. And that's why the religion was outlawed, is because Lothric had no intention of linking the fire. So the demons are the angels. 
um, in my estimation. And when the high wall appeared, uh, that was when all the angel demon shit went down. Got him with the throwing knife. Hit him with the praise it. Hell yeah. One invasion down. One lore discussion down. There's Yol over there. What's up, boy? On to the next one. So here we are in the Undead Settlement. We're an Undead Settler. We're doing Undead Settlement shit. Uh, we're using the um, Great Machete as well as the Great Wooden Hammer. Both of these weapons, uh, item description, tell us that they're both... I'm sorry, they, they were neither used for combat. One was using for crushing up bones and stuff, the hammer, and one was used for dismantling the machete. So, basically, I think this all ties into the Mortician's Ashes. We'll get into that a little bit later. Also, all of these weapons are plus nine because I didn't have the Titanite slabs to just blow on all these random-ass fucking weapons. So the damage is actually a little better than it appears in these videos. Um, we invade in this room, which means we have to switch and we have to become a thrall, which is so much easier to fucking do, because Quickstep rules, y'all. It's fucking awesome. Um, hell yeah, doing thrall shit with our thrall bros. Uh, if we look at the thrall axe and the thrall hood, um, the hood tells us it's used to cover the head of lesser folk who are set out to work as slaves throughout Lothric, um, but also occasionally used to shame and humiliate criminals. Uh, the axe tells us it's basically just a cunning weapon for a cunning folk. So, here we see uh, an ultra great weapon versus a fast weapon, and like literally the fastest weapon. <laughs> this axe is fucking ridiculous. I love it. Um, now, keep in mind, I've never used it before these fights, so this is all new to me, but it was very easy for me to see why this weapon is so good. Um, it has no range. All right, but it doesn't need it because you've got that quick step, and this guy unfortunately had infused his weapon with a lightning infusion, and I'm not sure why he did that. I don't remember him ever using any other miracles, so I doubt his faith is that high, but um, that's what allowed us to survive that three-hit combo he just got us with, I think, anyway. He's doing pretty good damage with the R1s. But I do like this weapon. Um, the thralls here... Uh, so he, he starts going for parries, and I'm not sure that's the way to go against the Thrall Axe. Um, I was trying to do like some quick step backstabs, and I don't know if that's... I don't know if it's possible, or if I just suck at doing it, because like I said, I've never used this weapon before. Uh, he threw out a kick there, which is actually pretty clever. Um, the problem is the stun doesn't lo uh, last long enough. Um, that's why I started incorporating the punch into my machete play. Um, and I think uh, the any kind of ultra weapon would benefit from using like some punches, throwing in some punches, uh, because ultra greats just don't have any kind of quick attack. That thrall axe, son. Look at that. It's good shit. Um, didn't talk a lot about the lore here. And to be honest, I'm not sure what the fuck the thralls are doing here. I mean, I guess they are technically lesser folk, but they rule pretty hard. Thrall axe does anyway. This room that we're in is sort of uh, the first area where we start to see that the undead settlement, they prepare these bodies. Uh, we also see a tree guy here, but they prepare these bodies. Um, and I'm not sh I think maybe those two things are related. I think, I think the preparation of bodies in the undeads, because keep in mind, everything here is undead. Nothing can die. So like all these bodies that are strung up, all these bodies that are put in cages, everything's not dead. It's undead, right? So like it's it's still there. You know, like there's some kind of level of consciousness or something going on. Um, so I think the reason that they do all this crazy shit with these great machetes and hammers is uh, basically um, to stop people from turning into these tree guys, maybe. And I think that this might have something to do with. Uh, the evangelists that we find in this area. Um, I think it's a rather uh, new kind of phenomenon. Um, I, I think the burial preparation, all that stuff, I think that's like a new thing. Uh, these poor guys here, I invade these guys like a million times in a row because they're playing through the level together. I don't know if they were ganking or not. I know I invaded them a shit ton of times, but they always seemed to be making a little bit of progress, so I don't think they were they were necessarily gankers. Um, I'm trying to get them to come in this room so that I can turn back into a thrall. 
<laughs> uh, also, I can use this doorway to my advantage um, if I had played a little bit smarter. But there, you see the demon grade axe. I'm sorry, axe, not hammer. He used it to his advantage, which is what I was trying to do. Basically, just funnel them through here so I can get an attack. And then when they finally do it, when they finally bite on the bait, that happens. What the fuck was that shit? So I get my ass just fucking handed to me, but I'm able to escape. Uh, they summon a blade of the dark moon, because why the fuck wouldn't you summon a blade of the dark moon against some guy who's fucking role playing a <laughs> village worker? But I get to go back to being a thrall here, which is nice. Uh, the thralls, like I was saying, I'm, I'm not sure what their purpose is in this area. Uh, I mean, lesser folks, obviously, but I don't think they're slaves in this area. It, I, I'm not like, who would they be a slave to? Uh, Grey Rat tells us that this is not the home of any lord, so who's here to make people slaves? I think uh, I think this is a case of them being criminals uh, and not slaves, which maybe is supposed to tie us into Grey Rat and why he's from here. Um, just the slaves that live around here have to uh, wear this hood. So, um, like I was saying, this room appears to be the first area where we see they're preparing corpses and, and why they're preparing corpses. Uh, I get to be a thrall here. And I mean like a real deal thrall. And drop down on somebody's head. Annoying ass thralls. <laughs> I love them though. Um, so yeah, what, uh, the, the preparation of bodies. Um, appears to be like a new thing to me. I think that's something that came with the uh, evangelists spreading their way of the white bastardized religion. Um, I think they used to bury undead here and they don't anymore. That's why we find the mortician killed. That's why these undead workers um, are using these weapons to do all this crazy shit to bodies. They're basically dismembering them and smashing them and crushing them and everything. And speaking of evangelists, we're out here now, so I guess it's time. I'm terrible with the spiked mace weapon, uh, so I'm going to try and buy some time and be uh, an undead worker until when they trigger the evangelist, I'll have to play an evangelist, I guess. That's how we'll do it. Um, chucking firebombs, which I'm allowed to do because undead workers do that. If you've ever gone to that area near all the exploding barrels, you know exactly how annoying undead workers can be with their fucking firebombs. Um, worth mentioning here is the evangelist has everybody praying to a tree, um, which, like, here we go again, this fucking tree stuff, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm still thinking on it, like, even as I'm recording this, I'm like, what the fuck is up with the trees, man? Um... We'll see if we can, you know, work something out. Uh, the host is using a great shield and I'm mean, a great shield. I'm sorry, a great sword and a parry shield. Uh, the phantom is using the demon great axe. That should have hit somebody, right? All right, they've triggered the evangelist. So here we go. Evangelist time. Where the fuck's the armor? Okay. Uh, like I said, I'm terrible with this fucking weapon. So you guys, you know, don't 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 frown on me. I'll figure it out eventually, but it's just that spin attack. I know that's useful. I just I need to figure out when it's useful. Okay, we've got another invader here, and he also appears to be role playing as a villager. He's using pyromancy, so I'm not sure that's allowed. Holy shit, I'm dead. It took a minute for that backstab damage to add up, but once it did, I was fucking dead. Sure enough, we'll try again. Never give up. Never surrender. See these cages everywhere? All these bodies hanging everywhere? That's what I'm talking about. Like, those guys aren't dead. They're undead, you know? Nothing dies. How creepy is that? Very Bloodborne kind of, uh, Hemwick feel going on. Uh, I should be a thrall, but I can't change that quick, so I'm just gonna stay an evangelist. It's like I would have been a thrall up until I left the room. I'm not that good at switching uh, armor and stuff, so fuck it. We're just going to keep the evangelist gear on. I wish I could use Karthus Rouge with this weapon. Like, if I was allowed Karthus Rouge, that would be great. And I can do that at uh, the Cathedral of the Deep. So, yeah, look forward to that shit. 
Anyway, um, I will figure out how to fucking play this thing. All right. All right avoid that. Let's heal. So what are the evangelists doing here? Um, there are hollows in the area, and if you put the hollows in front of the evangelist and their hunting party, they will target them. Yeah, period. Okay. I, okay, I think I'm starting to get it. All right. <laughs> I, 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 I learned. I learned a little bit. <laughs> that spin attack is, uh, I'm assuming it's unparryable until the end. So we're going to try this again. And uh, those people are the only people in the area right now. So I think we'll invade them again. And I think I'm starting to figure it out. So maybe we'll have better luck. Maybe. But the evangelists, uh, they're setting people up on the road to sacrifices, hollows to feed to Aldrich at the Cathedral of the Deep. Yeah, go for the parry. Go for the parry. And get an R2 roll catch. Unbeatable. My evangelist is unbeatable, y'all. Unbeatable. Unless you count the two times they beat me. But we don't. Because, why would we? Anyway. Moving on. So, here we see the evangelist. Oh, look, it's the same people. They're probably mad that I killed them. <laughs> oh well, fuck them. No, not really. These guys were good opponents. They were good sports. Um, oh, good. Fortunately, though, we don't have to play as an evangelist because we're up here. <laughs> no fall damage. Silver cat ring for the fucking win. Yeah, but how come you're cosplaying as a worker and you have the silver cat ring and not the... Because they don't wear rings and I do. That's why. Oh, look. We got another buddy. And we're switching to a thrall because they're hanging out in there. Now, we can do this fight the way it was meant to be done. As a thrall, not an evangelist. <laughs> because fuck playing an evangelist. <laughs> God, I love that quick step. That is just like the coolest move in the fucking... If they put that on a straight sword, I would never do anything else. And yeah, it would be broke as fuck, but god damn it, do I want it. Hooray, we win. Get backstabbed. <clears throat> Let's leave these people alone. We fucked with them enough. This is actual footage of me trying to get a fucking four-pronged plow, in case you didn't believe me. I mean, I use the Leo ring, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm use, I am I thrust attacks. Just somebody give me the goddamn four-pronged plow. Where do you get it? Where does it come from? So they want to spawn us all the way over here. Uh, but it gives us a chance to talk about the weird-ass fucking cage people and the another Nana's disappeared so grandson carries the cage whatever the fuck that possibly mean I don't know um, but basically that dude's telling us to join the mound makers uh, which is he's explaining to us how to join the mound makers I guess is what he's doing um, yeah human pine resin we can use in this level because the mortician's ashes gives us uh, access to I think a couple um, and if I'm mistaken uh, I know for a fact that you find some in the undead settlement uh, in an area that you can't invade unfortunately because it's blocked off but yeah so here we are look who it is <laughs> these guys again but we've still got an invader buddy I bet these guys were like sick and fucking tired of seeing me <laughs> I don't know if they were ganking or just trying to get through the level but we get to play a thrall because they're up top so we're going to go up top. But the problem is, once we get out there, we have to play a fucking worker again. So, fuck it. Back to worker. Again, this is another room that looks to be where they prepare bodies for whatever weird shit they're into. Um, considering that things are undead and they just keep spawning back to life, my take on it is that doing this um, allows them to keep corpses dead. Hey, look. Meatballparade.mp4 <laughs> Good job, Red. 
Alright, we'll start this invasion off with the hammer. I haven't been using the hammer a lot. We'll give it a go. I'm kind of shit with it. I'm more shit with the hammer than I am shit with the machete, and I'm pretty shit with the machete, so you can imagine how much shit I am with this hammer. I'm surprised I was able to say all of that without getting uh, my tongue twisted. Awesome. Cool. Arrows raining down everywhere. And here's a phantom. Awesome. Phantom's got a great sword and a... Fuck! Great sword and a parry shield. Uh, it looked like the host was using an axe, maybe? I think that's what that was. Um, we're this close to the tree. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give the tree an honest go, lore-wise. Um, it drops the transposing kiln, um, which we learned is a, a Corland thing, transposing uh, souls into weapons and stuff. That's a Corland thing, but it's deemed forbidden. I don't know if it's forbidden before or after the evangelists showed up. Uh, keep in mind, the evangelists seem to have locked away every old religious uh, aspect. Ooh, I got lucky. I thought that jump attack would be faster than my hammer, but that says a lot about how slow jump attacks are, I guess. Um, the evangelists seem to have locked away. Yes, 3v1, the guy who's playing a fucking worker. Ugh. Okay, he's one of these guys who's just going to run headlong into a danger. I recognize he must be a fucking Dark Moon Blade on his regular time. Uh, what was I saying? I'm just going to lead him back to the enemies because the blue, who's not a blue right now. Um, oh, that was stupid. Ah, that is a weakness of mine when people are content to throw spells or items. That fucks with me. Let's heal. Hope they do something stupid. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> Later, Blue. Um, and now it's going to be absolute chaos as I fight amongst the arrows. But chaos helps invaders. I've said it a million times, right? Okay, what was I saying? Transposing Kiln is a Corland thing. Uh, the game refers to boss souls, and this game is Twisted Souls, which is kind of weird. I don't remember that happening in other Dark Souls games. Uh, it's always one of the Twisted Souls steeped in strength. The transposing kiln itself is crystal lizards that are stitched together. Um, I'm not sure what the fuck that implies. We never really get a lot of lore on crystal lizards, uh, except for the big ones, via... Um, I forget what... It's basically Demon Titanite, but it's something different in Dark Souls but you know what I'm talking about. That's the only thing that I can think of that mentions Crystal Lizard by name. Um, but I think that it was fed to the Curse Rotted Great Wood and deemed forbidden. Um, I would assume all of this is after the Evangelists showed up because the Evangelists basically, they've locked all of the old religious stuff, Velka, clerics, everything else that's like old religious, like old way of the white related and any other kind of religion, they've locked up in that fucking dungeon below the Undead Settlement. Uh, we also get the Soul of the Rotted Great Wood, um, which tells us that uh, it's basically eaten all kinds of curses. Um, ever since its establishment, all manner of curses have managed to seep into the Undead Settlement. The worst of them were sealed away in a spirit tree, but eventually the curses took their toll, which is what I guess animated the tree. Um, I don't know if that means that the tree is animated after too many curses have been eaten. Maybe a, a person turns into a tree when they're too cursed. Is that what we're supposed to help me? Dark Souls three, teach me. <laughs> so we managed to get rid of the phantom with a well-timed rolling R one. Now this host is uh, gonna try and drink in our face, which is silly. All right. Uh, we learned that um, the profaned grab attack is not that great, but R1s to my face are. That's pretty smart. Yeah, go for it again. Get punched. You have no poise. It's not happening. I'll, stop going for it. And why can't I punish it? I was thinking about punishing it with a charged R2, but if the fucking regular R1 isn't fast enough. Got him with a rolling R1. Eh. Alright, we're gonna heal up, and we're gonna finish this shit. Oh, that should've hit. Ah, got him. Oh, no. Alright, we need a punch. We need a punch, you guys. Punch tech, go! Hell yeah. Praise it. That'll do it. 
for today's episode, guys. Um, next time we'll probably still be in the end of settlement because there might be some stuff I didn't go over once I watch this. And I think, hey man, I'd like to go over that stuff. <laughs>